You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants. According to my first guest, he says nobody should be wearing a loose fitting denture. With us, we have uh, one of uh, California's go-to implant dentist. Uh, he's got lots of experience. We've had him on the program before, Dr. Tim Rao. Dr. Rao, welcome Thanks to Thanks for program. having me, Randy. Yeah, it's great to be back. Now, we, we, we've, you've got some photos, so we'll get to as many of those as we can. Right. Now, for people that don't know your practice, your, your implant center, who's the typical dental implant patient you see? Great question. There are really two main categories of, uh, of patients that come into our door. There are those who are already in a denture, and they've been in a denture for years. And those, quite frankly, those people are hard to come by because once they get their denture, they're kind of out of the system. They don't really they don't go, go to, to the dentist. They don't go to the dentist anymore. They did okay. it, they did the final treatment and they're done. Uh, those people are harder to find, but if, but if we could get those people in the door I and mean, we can change their life in one day. They could walk in with no teeth one day and that same day they could walk out with full top and bottom teeth, uh, smiling, biting it into an apple that same day. Is that a bit of an exaggeration? Uh, no. I mean, they could walk in with no, no teeth and walk out with upper and lower teeth that don't come Correct. out. Correct, 100% true. Okay, yeah. have you done that before? We've, we do it all the time. Okay. Yes, okay. all the time. Uh, that second group is a group of people who, you know, they've had cavities, they have bad teeth, bad gums, they're dealing with infections, um, and they're probably headed towards a denture, or maybe they've been told that a denture is going to be their only option, or maybe worse, they've been told, you know, they can't, uh, they won't be a good candidate for implants. And so they're stuck out there and they don't know what their options are, but they're freaking out a little bit because, you know, they got a broken tooth here, their crown's falling so off So they don't there. want a denture, that's why they go They do you. not want a denture okay. and they do not know what their other options are and they are absolutely frustrated with their teeth. Now, you're in Hollister. That's right. But you say you're surprised. People will travel to see you. They will. And we're seeing people from Monterey, from Santa Cruz, uh, people are coming all the way from Stockton, Los Banos. We have people driving up from King City and as far as Paso Robles. So people are driving a couple hours regularly, almost every every day, if not every day, a couple times a week. Now people need to know, look, I'm not trying to endorse you. Of course. Uh, and at the top of the show, we said you are one of the go-to centers in California, mm -hmm. which is true. Correct. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong here. So how, how implants are typically done is you go to one place that does a surgery. Mm -hmm. You go to another doctor that puts a teeth on top. Right. And now in your office, you do both parts. Is that correct? That's is that why you do it so fast? It is fast. And it's not only fast, it's cheaper. When you're, when you're driving to different offices and you're going to see a specialist for one part and you're going to an imaging center for another part, and then you're coming back to another dentist to get the actual teeth fitted, uh, you're spending more time, more money, and likely dealing with more complications and more frustrations Is that along how the typically way. Happens? Yeah, that, that's the okay. traditional way. Now we had you on the program in 2016. You told me in the green room, it's a lot better now. So what are the biggest changes in 2016 or since then that have made it a lot faster, better, more predictable? Well, honestly, the entire process from start to finish, while it used to be manual and analog type programs, everything's digital from the planning of the implants to the planning of the teeth. What does it mean digital? Uh, you know, so everything's being done on the computer. If before I even put you back and get you numb and start working on your teeth, I already know where the implants are gonna go and I already know where there's, those teeth are gonna land up because we've done it all on the computer beforehand. Okay. So we have a really perfect idea of where things are gonna end up. So when you call it a digital workflow, that's what we're talking that's about. That's what we're talking about, yep. And we're 3D printing the teeth. Uh, in your office? In our office. Okay. And, and then we have chances to make revisions if we need to and, and all the controls right there with us. So it's like 3D printing teeth. Mm-hmm. Is somebody there that paints the teeth or, yep, absolutely. or makes the teeth? Yep, yep. Right there. Right there, right in the office. So if somebody's watching this, and you would obviously have to have openings in your calendar, of but course. could they have their new teeth next week? If you had openings in your if, calendar. If we had openings in the calendar and they came in and they were ready to go, we could make it work. Is that Next right? week, absolutely. Okay, now what are some other changes? You know, honestly, the biggest thing for me that I shouldn't be surprised about but I continue to be surprised over and over. Uh, and it's gonna sound cliche because, you know, we're doing smile makeovers, we're doing big cases, but the change in these people's lives when they get their new teeth. You know, someone comes in and, and they are who they are and they've been that way for a while and, and no one's teeth go bad overnight. It takes years and years and years. But when they get their teeth changed in one day, they automatically transform. And, and being along for that ride on that journey with those people, that's, 
that's my nice. adrenaline. That's what keeps me going. Absolutely. What's it like when they look at the mirror in, in the mirror sometimes? Yeah, you know, it's great. And and I, this actually just happened a few weeks ago. You know, a guy who isn't very emotional. He came in. He's former military. He came in. He was very serious. He didn't really talk much. And we did his top and bottom teeth. Uh, woke him up. Handed him the mirror. He sat up. And and you get a little uncomfortable because he didn't he didn't say anything. His face didn't change. He didn't say anything. He got real quiet and we're all kind of waiting, waiting for him to crack a smile or waiting okay. for him to admire things. And then the little tear just started. And this is a guy who probably hasn't cried since he was a baby, right? Uh, and just one little tear and he just nods and, and shakes his head. And, and that, wow. I mean, that's his, that's You his. guys must get choked up sometimes. Absolutely, we love it. And because we're, we're on this emotional journey with our patients, because it's a very emotional process. It absolutely is. Really? So these people, you have to understand, people who have had bad teeth or people who have been in dentures for a long time, uh, you know, when you have something in your life that, that you're uncomfortable with or you're not proud of, whether it's your hairline or your teeth or whatever, you, you change how you live. And, and it really does, it really holds you back. And so there's people walking around out there, minding their own business, going to day to day, and they may not even realize it, but they're not living their full life. And if you can change that thing, if you can give them a smile and they haven't had one for years and all of a sudden they go from covering, you know, covering their mouth when they laugh or avoiding certain foods and all of a sudden all of that's opened up, that's a change. You say that when they come in, let's say six months later or yep. whatever for a cleaning, mm -hmm. you don't even recognize them sometimes. They're that different. Their whole really? persona changes. I mean, we've changed their smile and they can smile and eat and that's great. Uh, but they really change who they are. You know, with, with self-confidence, you walk differently. Okay. You talk to people differently. You know, they, they walk in, they're smiling. They know all the girls. <laughs> they're, they're chatting them up. Um, and, and, you know, the one thing that they all say, and I ask everyone who comes through, you know, how their experience was and what they would tell someone else thinking about it, they all kept their teeth too long. They all waited too long to make the change because for years they lived that way where they were hiding things, where they weren't living their true, true lives, true to themselves. Uh, and so they all wish they had just done it sooner. Just go and, and make that change sooner. And then as one guy said, and, and we'll show you his picture soon, he said, once you get your new teeth, your life unfolds again. And I love that phrase. Really? I love that phrase. It's nice. Yeah. Good stuff. Okay. So show, let's take a look at one yeah, of the Yeah. Let's, let's take a start. All right, so you see here, this guy, uh, you can already tell just looking at the photo that he's not comfortable smiling. We ask everyone to smile for this uh, before photo, but uh, oftentimes their smile is quite unpracticed. And you can see he's smiling, but you don't see a single tooth. Or if you do see a tooth, it's, it's maybe just one over here and one over there. Um, you know, this is someone, there's a lot of people like him out there that, you know, they don't come in unless something hurts. You know, they might have an infection up there and maybe it swells up sometimes and then it goes down. Um, you know, maybe one of their teeth is, is getting loose and moving. And over the years, he's had a tooth pulled. Maybe he had a root canal here or there. Uh, and finally, he ends up at this place where something's got to give. And they all say that. So I had to come in now. I've been putting this off forever and I had to come in. Like they in had now. enough. Finally. Right. Enough okay. is enough. I need, I need teeth. I need to be able to smile. But I they don't want eat. dentures. They, nobody wants dentures. Okay. They really okay. don't. They really don't. And, and people like this, Randy, they can't eat what they want to eat. They can't eat very well. If you only have three or four top teeth and maybe seven or eight bottom teeth, you know, how are you chewing on something? How are you eating corn? How are you chewing up meat? You just can't. It's, okay. it's really hard to do. And so some of them will even say, well, they feel like they're going to choke every time they eat or they're, every time they eat something too hard, they feel like, you know, one of their teeth is going to break or fall out. So we get him a nice set of teeth. He's, he's chewing on meat. He's eating the food he loves. And he's got this great, beautiful smile. And it's changed his life. It looks good. He looks amazing. Well, he looks different. He, yeah. So I want you to look at these before and afters. Okay. And there's a few things that I want to point out. First of all, look at his beard. And I, I didn't tell him to trim his beard or anything like that. But, but with a new smile, something prompted him like, oh, I, I should clean this up a bit. And, okay. and, and that looks really nice, right? His facial hair got cleaned up a bit. His hair, right? You notice it's a little more kempt. Uh, but one thing I love is look at his eyes. When he's smiling in that before picture, it's a forced smile. It's, it looks unpracticed, right? Look at him on the, on the after picture and look at the way he's smiling with his eyes. Looks good. And that's a real smile. Smiling with your eyes like that, that's a real smile. And you look and, and the teeth are straight. They're where they're supposed to be. If you look at his lips and the way his, uh, his top teeth just align perfectly with that lower lip. I mean, everything turned out great. So that's because of the computer. Of course. That's why the teeth that's, fit his mouth. We put them exactly where we wanted them. And uh, so what does he like more, eating or how it looks? Yeah, I mean, the, that's the thing is they, they're always surprised. He likes them both. He wouldn't trade either. Could you 
bite things with your front teeth when this is done? Or like a carrot, raw carrot? Or do you have to take it easy on certain things? Really, people are eating anything they want. So for, for him, it was, you know, eating chicken off the bone or eating ribs or for okay. someone else it might be hey i haven't chewed up a salad properly in years so yeah people are one of one of the other cases that i'll show you later in fact in their in their uh testimonial they talked about you know what corn actually tastes really good off the cob you know like <laughs> okay. like that's a surprise right here's another one all right and this is this is one of my favorite people and i just saw her this week uh, amazing woman um, and so you look at here, you look at the before picture here, uh, and you see someone again who's uncomfortable with her smile. We, we ask these people to do the biggest smile they can, and this is what we get. It's a, okay. it's a very half smile, and you see she's missing some teeth. Uh, this is someone who's had uh, issues with bleeding gums. This is someone who's had cavities. This is someone who, you know, has done the right things, has, has tried to go to the dentist, has tried to get work done, has tried to take care of things, uh, but through no fault of her own, you know, Mother Nature didn't deal her a good set of teeth. What'd they tell her, like you need a denture? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's essentially the message that people are getting, is that they're gonna end up in a denture. And that's the only choice. And that's a bummer. But you don't like dentures. How come you don't like dentures so much? Uh, you know, it's not me, it's the patients don't like dentures. I've never okay. worn a denture, but the patients who have dentures hate them and they don't want them. A study was done once that, you know, once you've replaced your permanent real teeth with dentures that you have about 10 percent of the chewing power that you had with your permanent teeth and and in, in a, a similar study they said only about 15 percent of denture wearers are satisfied with their dentures so she's someone who comes in uh we bring her into the office we use an anesthetist at the office they get her sedated she's, so what like a nurse an she's a nurse yep okay does yep. iv sedation does iv sedation okay. and she's very comfortable uh, she's, she has no problem with what we're doing. We get her numb, uh, we get her a whole new set of top teeth. We wake her up and we show her and she's ecstatic. One visit. Now, now look at this after, look at her smile. And I talked before Looks about good. how people smile with their eyes. Look at her eyes. I mean, this, this didn't, we didn't have to coach her to smile. This, <laughs> this smile came, okay. you know, very naturally to her. And again, you know, there's, there's details. I want you to look at her lips and I want you to look at the way the teeth line up with her lips. Uh, I want you to look at the way the midline lines up just with the center of her nose. And I want you to look at the whiteness of her teeth. That's a, that's a nice- On white, the after. Yeah. Right, on the after. That's a nice white set of teeth, but it's not blinding. You know, she, this isn't someone who wants to look like a, a Hollywood star. Okay. This is someone who wants to look like uh, age appropriate, healthy, good looking person. And, and wouldn't you agree that she, she is prettier? Wouldn't you agree that she looks happier? Yeah. But it's not just her, it's everyone. Uh, when you get a new smile, you look more handsome, you look more attractive, uh, you look smarter, maybe more educated. Um, you know, it does so many things for you that you didn't expect. And how long, like when we go to the before photo, she had really bad teeth, you're saying mm -hmm. underneath there, gum problems, mm -hmm. infections. How long do they typically hate their teeth before they do something about it? Years and years. Did you put a number like five years, 10 years? <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say a number, but it's always more than five years. I mean, these things, like I said, they don't happen overnight. They, they, they brew and they brew and then they come to a boiling point. And at that boiling point, they're in my office. And then they live with regret. Then they why live with, didn't why I do this? Why, why didn't I do it sooner? Should have done it sooner. Now you're a dentist. So right. you probably think like the smile is the most important thing that you can do. Of course. And it's not, it's not just because I'm a dentist, Randy. Um, you know, survey after survey, study after study has shown that the smile is, if it's not the number one thing, it's one of the top two or three things that people are looking for in a mate. In fact, there was a men's fitness study, uh, an article several years ago that had uh, all the things you're looking for in a mate for men. It's a men's fitness magazine. Okay. Um, and smile was number one. It was number one before anything else. And, and it's funny, but it's true. When we remember someone, what do we remember about meeting someone? We remember their smile. Sometimes the smile, yeah. Yeah, when we remember one of our past loved ones, grandma or grandpa who, who's long since passed, we remember their smile. We remember their smile from holidays, from Christmas, from you know family dinners. Uh, and that smile is really something that sticks with you. So it's obvious that a, a nice smile makes someone more attractive. There's no, there's no debating that. We've, we've kind of okay. established that and that's okay. Uh, but the opposite is also true. You know, if you think about a villain in a Hollywood movie, what do they have? They always have they always have kind of scarier darker, teeth that's darker teeth, yeah, okay. or you know gray and in the movies if you want to make someone look um, you know uneducated you black out their front tooth right or the Halloween stores every year Halloween comes along you go into the costume shop and what do they have they have all these different the sets fake of clip on teeth yes they have fake teeth that they're missing a tooth or their buck teeth or all these different things and so teeth really have become you know 
not just a symbol for someone who's attractive or educated or intelligent, but also the opposite as well. And that's so interesting because, you know, implants aside, if I, if you just brought me someone off the street and they have, you know, the average person out there might have a little bit of crowding or a little bit of stain and yellowing. Yeah. If, if you just gave me two or three months to do Invisalign and whitening, we can make them look younger just that easily. And just by having wider, straighter just teeth. Just wider, straighter teeth. Just okay. it reverse ages you. So when you take someone whose teeth are already, you know, bad and, and have, you know, had years of damage and you give them straight white teeth, it reverse ages them years and years and years. Do, do these people come, because a lot of people say that their, their dentist judges them. It breaks my heart every time. Not Does that go on? Not only do the dentists judge them or they perceive that they judge them, but the dentists have, have maybe unintentionally hurt them. A lot of the patients that like I what? have. What do you mean? Well, a lot of the patients that I have, one of the reasons that their teeth are so bad, one of the reasons that they haven't been to the dentist in decades is because at a young age, they encountered some dentist who maybe didn't get them all the way numb or who maybe shamed them because they had a cavity and they left as a child or a teen or even a young adult just traumatized. And so then they just stop going, which we get, right? I, I understand It's like that. a lecture from the dentist. It's, it's a lecture and, it, and, and it leaves or... a mark. And now their whole you know, course of their dental, uh, their dental health has been altered. So we're picking up the pieces. Well, well, let me ask you about denture wares, backing up sure. for a moment. Are, are, there real, are there a lot of denture wares, like where you are? There's so many denture wares. There's, there, if, we, if we rounded up all the denture wares from South San Jose down to Paso Robles and over to the coast in Monterey and Santa Cruz, we could probably fill up Levi's Stadium. We could fill up a you know, Sunday football game at Levi's Stadium. We could fill it up with denture wares. Well, well, then if dental implants are so good, why aren't they all doing it? What's your take? Because yeah. I asked you before you came on, I said, are you getting a lot of denture wares? You said, not really. Now, these are, these are people who have left dentistry behind. They got their dentures and they hated their teeth before their dentures. They got their dentures and they still hate their teeth and they've, they've had it. They quit. They're, they're not doing the dentist anymore. So they're out there living their life and they probably don't know what the options are. Or if they do know about dental implants, if they have heard about them, they think they're dangerous or too expensive or they're going to take too long or maybe they're not a great candidate. Okay. How old can you be to get this done? Uh, and isn't it true, by the way, I should also mention, if you've been in a denture like 10 or 15 years, you can't do this. Not enough bone. One of my favorite stories, okay. uh, a guy who I grew up down the street from, he came and he found me um, because he had been in dentures forever and he had a lower denture and just like everyone with dentures, his lower denture moved around. It wobbled everywhere. This is one of the best guys. He was, he was my neighbor for years. Um, and he came in, he said, Tim, you know, I hate this lower denture. I never want to wear it. I take it out to eat. It's terrible. Can you do anything? And he had been in this for a long time. Uh, and so we did a scan. We checked him out. And, he, and lo and behold, he had, he had great bone. He had perfect bone. And that's always the question is, is there enough bone for us to put in dental implants? And so in one visit, we put in four implants. We affixed his denture uh, to, his, to his bottom teeth. And he walked out of there with permanent lower teeth. And he's never looked back. And that, that man is in his 80s now, you know? These aren't spring chickens. These aren't people, you know. So what's your oldest patient that you've given an upper and lower set of teeth supported by implants that don't come out? The oldest patient that I've done is probably in their 80s. Why would they want to do it at that age? You know, they want the same thing you and I want. Uh, if you're... If you're 80s, let me paint the picture for you. If you're okay. in your 80s, you're one of two things. You know, best case scenario, you're, you're still at home living alone uh, or with your partner. But, you know, people are coming to visit. And when people come, what do they do? They bring food. Okay. Everyone wants to bring snacks. Whether you're at home or you're in a, a care facility, when people come visit, it's always food. We have a food culture, right? That's, that's what we do. And so if people are coming in and they're bringing, you know, peanut brittle around Christmas. Well, what are you supposed to do with peanut brittle if you're in a denture? Okay. You, can't, you can't eat that, right? And so when someone's in their 80s or even in their 90s and they're to the point where they can't eat the foods they want to eat uh, and when people come over to visit them, they can't engage in the, in the eating and, and the uh, festivities, they want that back. They want what they had because they, they had that for years, right? So we're short on time, so I'm going to rush you with the photos because okay. I know you have some more left. Let me show you this patient. Okay. So an again, a nice lady. She's wonderful. She comes in. She's frustrated because she's lost teeth. 
she's she's been a good she's been a good dental patient. She's had crowns done, she's had fillings done, she's been having her visits, and things just aren't working. And it, and again, this is something we see all the time. There's people who are who just get on this dental treadmill. Over the years, they're spending a thousand dollars here, five hundred dollars there, a thousand dollars here. You know, you add that up over the years, it costs a fortune to keep getting your money. dentistry okay. done and redone. Um, so she comes in, uh, and and like many of our patients, she has no idea what the options are, and she thinks that her only option is going to be she's going to end up in removable teeth. She's going to end up in a denture, and she's horrified. Okay. Because she knows people in dentures, right? This, she's seen people struggle to eat. She's seen people, you know, who have to put their teeth in a cup at the end of the night. And, and that's not a great way to live. Uh, and so we were able to sit her down. Again, we, with every patient, we give them options. It's not a one size fits all. It's not a cookie cutter approach. If, if there are teeth worth saving, we will definitely save them okay. and, and do what we can. And that's one of the great things about uh, being a general dentist is when someone walks in the door, you know, I got a lot of tools in my tool bag. I mean, you, you will save teeth as well. I, I love, I, I'll, that's the default is we'll save teeth if we okay. can, right? Okay. Um, I, I love to, um, have someone keep what God gave them, right? And so with her, you know, we were able to establish what the best option was, and that was to get her a full set of upper teeth on implants. And so go ahead and let's, take a, good, look at, let's take a look at the after. Uh, and, and you've heard me say it twice already on the program, but I love to see people's eyes once we've done their teeth and the way they smile with their eyes and the little wrinkles that we all have, that we all earn over time, uh, and to watch those come with a real genuine smile. Uh, when you're coaching someone to smile, their eyes never do it. Uh, when someone's really happy, when someone's really self-confident, when they know that when they're smiling, no one's looking to, to so judge. So she has new teeth, they don't come out. They don't come out. She can eat whatever she wants. She's eating whatever she wants. She's, she's going to whatever activities she wants. Her friends are inviting her out for dinner and she's not saying no. She's not looking for excuses. Now, you've been on TV talking about this for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Did they ever see you on TV? They come in and they're still skeptical. Like, are you sure, doctor? Does that ever happen? They, yeah, and they and and you know, believe it or not, since since you're on that topic, some of them have watched the show five times, eight times, ten times before they come in. But they come in and they still aren't sure how we do it. This seems like a big mystery. It seems magic, and they still aren't <laughs> sure if they're a candidate. And so the consult's a great opportunity for us to explain the process, uh, explain the cost, explain the finance. Like they're kind of almost saying, "Is it true?" Is it true? Like they've watched it so many times. Can this be real? Right. Here's another one. All right. Again, this is such a nice lady. And you can look at her before picture. Again, we're coaching everyone to do their biggest smile. That's her biggest smile. Okay? All right. Not, a, not, not very big by mine and your standards, right? Um, she came in and this is, Randy, she's too young for a denture. You cannot yeah. put you cannot put a, a denture in a, in a young lady like this, a, a mom. You know, she's got kids at home. Um, so, so this is someone who's made it to the end of her rope with dentistry. She's tried everything. She's tried to get root canals. She's, she's got crowns and they're falling out. Uh, she's got multiple infections. She's got gum disease and she needs answers and she needs a solution. So we put her in a full set of permanent upper teeth on implants. Uh, they went great. And you can look at, again, let's look at her after picture. You see her smile. Totally different. Look at, look at her eyes, look at her smile. Look at the way, again, the, the teeth hit her lower lip. Uh, again, a, an appropriate level of whiteness. She looks young, she looks healthy, uh, she, she looks confident. And, and look at her smile. And, and you know, people have to, once we, once we do their teeth, they actually have to relearn to smile because they've gone years and years doing a half smile, hiding their teeth, okay. just trying to keep things undercover. So, you know, after about the 20th or 30th compliment she gets, <laughs> okay. you know, about her teeth, she's gonna be smiling ear to so ear. So that'll get bigger. Uh, even, it, it keeps going. And the confidence grows as we, as we go. Okay. All right, and here's another one. All right. Wonderful guy. Uh, this, is, this is the kind of guy everyone wants to be friends with. So mellow. <laughs> okay. he's, he's Hawaiian, and he's, he's the classic Hawaiian, just very mellow, talks slow, happy to be there. Uh, and then and look at his picture, and look, there's patients like this everywhere. He's got different colored crowns on his teeth. They're getting loose. Uh, they're getting gaps. And look, if, you're, if your teeth you know, were next to each other two or three years ago, and now they're separating and, and coming apart, you know, you've got problems. He goes back and forth to Hawaii all the time to visit family and friends, and one of his favorite things to do is go snorkeling. But what can't you do with loose teeth that fall out and might break any minute? You can't bite your snorkel properly. You have to be able to really, you know, 
clamp down on that thing yeah, so that okay. you can go snorkeling. And it was driving him nuts because that's one of his favorite things to do. And so he came in and he wants to know his options. Hey, I, I need to be able to smile. I need to be able to eat. And I need to be able to go snorkeling, you know, without fear of what's going to happen. So let's go ahead and take a look at his after. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, this is someone who, who this is just objectively. This is like done in one day. This is done in one day. This, okay. is, this is a good looking man. And he, and he looks healthy right here. He looks confident. Uh, totally different guy. Right. I mean, it's like almost his, you mentioned it uh, earlier in the conversation. They almost become more sophisticated looking. It, he more does, refined, it, it, more educated. You just look. Looking put, at this, it's true. He looks put together. And, and this is someone now who's able to eat uh, whatever he wants. He's eating steak. He's eating corn on the cob. He's biting into apples the way you and I bite into apples. Uh, he's going snorkeling with no fear that anything's going to fall out. Um, he's smiling at people. I mean, just it's it's life changing. We're out of time, but I have to ask you this question because insurance, even with the best dental insurance, doesn't really cover it. Okay, no. uh, Medicare, Medicaid doesn't cover this mm -mm. pretty much at all. No. So what's the answer? Yeah, 80 this must come up. Eighty percent of our patients are financing it. Really? And we have a, a staff member dedicated to making that process easy and simple. Uh, and that's what people do, and it works out great. So financing is mm -hmm. is offered on every consult. On, at get? every consult, right? And and you don't have to have perfect credit. Uh, but you have, you have to have okay credit, uh, and, and people are getting approved for however much we need. Now, I have to ask you about this snap in, snap out. Mm -hmm. We were talking in the green room. You're not a fan of these snap in, snap out teeth supported by dental implants. Mm -hmm. You say all the new guys, the new dentists, start out this way. Mm -hmm. why, aren't, why aren't you a fan? Well, it, first of all, it's an easy way to learn to do dental implants uh, because uh, you can get you can get away with more. I'll say that. But you know the reality is is whether you're you're wearing a denture that doesn't snap in or does snap in, you're still wearing a denture. And what okay. that means is you got teeth that come out, you got teeth that things get caught underneath. Uh, you still can't gnaw on an apple or bite a steak. Um, and so with new technology, uh, if if you're able to precisely place the implants where you want and design a set of teeth that go exactly where you want, you don't need to have teeth that come in and out. So ideally, everybody you meet, you want to do teeth that don't come in and out. Absolutely, 100%. Because a lot of the ads, and we were talking about this, mm -hmm. they think they're getting like teeth that don't come out and they're actually just snap in teeth. And they're not going to be happy okay. about it. They're not going to be happy about it. They don't like them? No. Now you do them here we, and there? Yeah, we've it's done them. a lot them. less expensive? In a, in a bind, if you twist my arm, I might do it, but I won't do it with a smile on my face. Is that right? Just it's, because they're not happy with they're it? Not, it's just not a great solution. Okay, good. Final message. Somebody mm -hmm. watching this, and maybe they've seen you before on television, but for whatever reason, they're putting it off. They're still skeptical. Maybe mm -hmm. they're the denture wearer. Or maybe they're the person with really bad teeth and gums. They've heard what you have to say, but they're still afraid. What do you say? You know, it's the easiest thing in the world to come in for a free consult. Uh, let us talk to you. Let us get some imaging. We'll take a scan. We'll identify where we can get implants. We'll take a look and, and see if there's even alternatives. Uh, it, it, it takes nothing but your time and your willingness to take that first step. Do you meet most of these patients on the consult? I meet every single one of them in the consult, yep. Do most of them see you from TV? Yeah, they almost recognize. all of them. Do you ever yeah. get recognized around town? Yeah, of course. It's great. Do they yeah. ever ask about me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm they, just kidding. They should. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we, um, we're out of time. So if somebody wants to make an appointment, they just go online? Right. They can go online, they can fill out the form, or they can call the phone number, uh, and they'll get set up for a free consult, and we'll get them in as soon as we possibly can. Good. I want to thank you for coming to the show. Great stuff. Thank you, Randy. Good information. Appreciate it. Yep. Appreciate it. You've been watching the Wellness Hour News That Makes You Healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. For now, I wish you good health.